So Ram's paper was about uh, product pre-announcement, and actually I also happen to have a, a paper on product pre-announcement, but that paper is about a vapor, what is it called, a vaporware. So vaporware, if you know, it is a practice where actually you pre-announce a product which you actually cannot uh, deliver. Okay, so the reason uh, I'm talking about uh, uh, vaporware is actually I'm engaging in, in, in vaporware in a sense. Because if you look at the program, actually the program, the title is uh, Competition Issues in, in, in Data-Driven Economy. So when I was invited by, by the organizers, I first of all, thank you for inviting me. So I thought I would uh, present a paper on, on data-driven economy, but uh, my research did not go as well as I anticipated. So I switched the topic. So, But I mean, this paper is not completely uh, uh, I mean, irrelevant in the sense that actually, so here I'm going to talk about uh, uh, platform market with, with uh, zero price products. I mean, we uh, often see many uh, products or services are provided uh, for free, but we know that, I mean, those platforms are not uh, benevolent. I mean, they are profit seeking uh, entities. So why do they provide a free product? Because there is another side that they can actually uh, 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 I mean, generate revenue. Okay, so I'm worried the mechanism. I'm usually I mean, the, the most common mechanism is basically ad financed business model. Okay, so essentially what you do is you serve customers, okay, for free, okay, but you are going to collect the data, okay, and then you are going to monetize that, that data, okay, from advertisers. So in that sense, I mean, this paper is also related to data-driven uh, economy. Okay, so now, uh, so first of all, I should mention that this paper is, uh, I mean. Uh, yeah, this is a joint work with Doshin John at uh, Toulouse School of uh, Economics. So, I mean, uh, yesterday and uh, today, okay, I mean, we have seen, I mean, so many, I mean, the different people talking about uh, two sides of the market and also in today's uh, uh, presentation by Gufu, okay. So, usually, I mean, what is common in two sides of the market is actually cross specialization. So you may actually uh, do below cost pricing and actually you may lose money, okay, but you can recoup the loss from the other side. Okay. But this problem okay, can be actually uh, problematic, okay, especially when the marginal cost is equal to zero. Okay. If marginal cost is equal to zero or close to zero, which would be typically the case for digital products, okay, so then in that case actually uh, below cost pricing will mean actually negative pricing. But we can imagine many situations where actually negative pricing may be a problem area. Okay. I mean, it will depend on, on uh, circumstances and also industries. Okay. So actually yesterday, uh, also Alex actually mentioned about uh, the need to, to have a, a taxonomy of uh, platforms. Okay. So he actually mentioned about actually transaction type of uh, platforms and also attention type of uh, platforms. So let's see transaction type of I mean, platforms, okay, like a credit card market. Okay. In the credit card market, actually, uh, you may actually engage in negative pricing. Okay. Essentially, actually, as a customer, okay, actually, when you purchase something, actually, you may get some rebate. That is a basically negative pricing. Okay. But in that case, actually, it is not that problematic because to get 1% rebate, okay, you are not going to spend $100. Because there's some kind of like a built-in mechanism uh, to prevent or uh, use the, the negative price. Okay. But in the case of actually a search engine, something like a Google, so this would be like an attention uh, type of platform, I mean, uh, termed by, by Alex yesterday. In this case, suppose that Google pays you, if you do a search, okay, you are going to get some money. Okay, what would happen? What would happen would be consumers will just sit in, in front of a computer okay, doing all random searches. Okay, so then what happens? Well, the advertisers, okay, they are willing to pay uh, Google is that because the consumers will do some uh, search, and they are looking for some kind of information. Okay, based on that information, okay, so then, I mean, business can actually do target advertising. Okay, but people are sitting in front of a computer, okay, doing just random search, okay, so then basically the Google's business model will actually collapse. Okay, so basically you cannot, you cannot uh, pay uh, uh, Money, okay, for people to engage in in, in, in uh, a search, okay. So if this is the case, okay, so so this is the kind of like uh, what I call the non-negative uh, uh, price constraint. So meaning that actually the price cannot be cannot be negative, okay. So in that case, actually now price there will be a natural lower bound, okay. 
as when we had a financial crisis, okay, of course, a monetary price would like to, to reduce interest rate, okay, but they cannot go below, okay, zero, okay, similar thing, okay. So basically, the, the point of my, my, my talk is when this kind of a constraint is a binding, okay, so you may have a very different uh, antitrust uh, implication, okay, so that's basically uh, what I'm uh, going to do. Uh, so here actually I'm going to give okay so some uh, three uh, examples okay so I'll talk about uh, leverage theory of time and also privacy policy and also R and D uh, incentives okay so these are three things because let me just uh, before going to 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 detail okay in case I do not have enough time so let me just give you some 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 flavor of the talk okay so what about the uh, time so time here actually the, what I'm looking at is uh, what is called the leverage theory of time okay so. So basically, the story is a firm has a monopoly position in one market, let's say market A, okay, but in market B, the firm is facing a competition. Okay? So the leverage theory of time means that by tying these two products together, okay, you can transfer your monopoly power from market A to market B. Okay? So in this type of analysis, okay, the Chicago School uh, criticism is very I mean, uh, uh, important. So basically, the Chicago School says that kind of argument that does not make sense. Okay, so why? I mean, the fact that you can uh, foreclose the competition, okay, that does not mean that the firm will have an incentive to do that. Okay, okay. So if you something you can do that, that does not mean you will necessarily do that. Because if you look at the incentive, okay, uh, we may have a different conclusion. Okay, so basically, the Chicago School argument is that when you are going to, okay. Uh, sell your inferior product, okay, by time, okay, what you have to do is you have to give incentive to consumers to purchase your bundle. So to do that, you have to actually reduce the price, okay. So actually, you are going to actually, by time, you are going to actually intensify competition, okay, in the, in the tidal good market, okay, actually, in the end, okay, you will end up actually a lower profit, okay. So there is no reason to do that, okay. For that kind of argument, what you need is that there should be, price should be, uh, adjust okay, after time. But in the tidal good market, if the price is already zero, there's no response in, 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 in pricing, actually that kind of Chicago school uh, criticism may not work. And actually we can come up with a new theory, new theory of uh, uh, time. Okay. So another case is actually two products are complementary. So there is also the Chicago school argument is that there's something called the price of squeeze. Okay. So the Chicago school basically saying that, well, you don't have any incentive to exclude your competitor who is more efficient. Okay. Actually, what you can do is something called a price squeeze. Okay. So you just charge a very low price. Okay. By doing that, okay, actually you are going to actually extract some surplus created by, by, by your rival. Okay. In that argument, okay, also there should be some price that will adjust okay, after time. But once the price is already zero, the, 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 the mechanism will not work, work either. Okay. So that's the kind of uh, argument I'm going to make in, in here. And also I'll talk about the pri privacy policy. So I consider a setting okay, where actually the firm will have no incentive to distort uh, uh, privacy policy, meaning that actually the firm's okay, optimal uh, privacy policy will be actually socially optimal. Okay, so here the argument is that, well, if you are not uh, protect the consumer privacy, Okay, so then that will be reflected by consumer the willingness to pay. Okay, so if you're not, I mean, protecting consumer uh, uh, privacy uh, properly, okay, so then actually consumers are willing to pay less. Okay, there also the price will be a mechanism, okay, that will allocate the resources and incentivize, okay. But once again, price is already equal to zero, then that mechanism will not work uh, properly. Okay, and finally, uh, I also look at the R&D incentives by, by, by the uh, platform. So here the, uh, Analysis we do is okay. So, as a platform, okay, you can do. Uh, there are two sides, okay, and you can do R and D on one side or, or on, on side A or let's say side B, okay. How you are going to allocate your resources across the two sides? Okay, here actually, I mean, I can also look at the kind of very simple, I mean, stylized two two stage competition, okay, where firms do R and D, okay, and then. Uh, in the second stage, they are engaged in, in competition. Okay? I mean, this is kind of similar sort of as just Rams actually presented. Okay? In his paper, he had okay, in the first stage, they make a product pre announcement uh, uh, decision, okay? and then based on that, they are going to engage in price competition. Okay? So then here, maybe in two stage competition, okay, what you are going to do in the first stage is what would be the implication of my uh, decision? Okay? 
for a second stage competition. Okay. Here, I mean, you can also come up with some kind of like analysis where actually BOMD will decide the R&D outcome, okay, anticipating how my R&D outcome will affect the price competition in the future. Okay. But once again, price is equal to zero, okay, then that mechanism will also would not work. Okay. So basically, my point is that uh, whether the price in the market is actually a positive price and it can adjust to economic situation, or price is uh, fixed at zero, we may have a very different antitrust implication. Okay, that's kind of like a key takeaway message. Okay. Okay, so let me uh, start with uh, leverage theory of time. Okay, so here I mean I look at the two-sided market. Okay, and I'm going to actually uh, uh, construct a model. Okay, where when the market is two-sided. And also, there is something called a non-negative price constraint. In other words, the price is equal to set equal to zero. Okay, so then uh, we can actually come up with some kind of a new theory of uh, uh, time. Okay, that's what, what what I'm going to explain. Okay, so to do that, okay, so let me just as, as a as a uh, okay, so, uh, okay, people going to the market. Okay, so why I do this one? Okay, so actually this one is kind of like uh, motivated by by the Google case in in, in Europe. So basically, this is the I mean, Google is, I mean, in trouble in Europe in, on many fronts, okay? So the case I'm going to talk about is the Android case. So one particular aspect of the case is actually uh, Google was alleged to engage in illegal time, okay? And this illegal time is actually foreclosed competitors, okay, in many ad markets, okay? So what is done, okay? So how this is done is something called a MADA, okay? So that is called a mobile application distribution agreement. Because what this agreement is basically saying the following. So Android operating system is for free. Okay, so every, I mean, phone manufacturer can, can, can use Android operating system. But there is one, one clause which is saying that if you are going to include any Google app, okay, you have to include all of them. So Google is like a dozens of uh, application apps. Okay, so for you, Consumers to use a smartphone, okay, what is, I mean, really needed is something called the app market, okay, which is the Google Play. So this is the, the application, okay, where you can search for apps and also you can download the apps, okay. Smartphone without apps is basically a dumb phone, okay, it, it cannot be smart, okay. So Google Play is, a, in a sense, an essential uh, app you need to have for any Android phone. But the thing is that once you include a Google Play in, in your smartphone, okay, then you have to install every Google, okay? So Google, um, YouTube, and the Chrome, and etc. Et okay? So everything should be included, okay? And this one is considered like illegal time, and actually the European Commission fined Google 4.34 billion uh, euro, okay? So this is kind of like a motivating uh, example, okay? So now uh, let me... Uh, move on to the model. So basically the model is, oh, this is basically, I'm starting with a very essential uh, Chicago school argument. Okay, so it's just one side of the market, also price can be, can be passed, um, there's no, no non-negative price constraint. Okay, so basically two markets, okay, A and B. Oops. And the market A is monopolized by firm one, and the market B, the firm one is facing competition. Okay, so the competitor is firm two. And each consumer willing to pay for monopoly product is given by U, okay? In market B, uh, the willingness is V1 and V2, and we assume that V2 is bigger than V1, meaning that the rival firm is more uh, efficient, okay? So this is the typical setting uh, to analyze uh, leverage theory of time. So graphically, so this is the case, because there's a market A and the market B. And the consumer willing to pay the U and the V1 and the V2 uh, respectively. Okay, and the V2 is bigger than V1. Okay, in this case, okay, so now what happens? Okay, if there is a no time, okay, so time then means the market A and the market B. Okay, so two products are sold independently. Then the monopolies in market A will just charge U. Okay, in market B, okay, so let's assume the marginal cost is equal to zero. Okay, so then what would be the equilibrium price? Where well, firm one will go all the way to marginal cost but equal to zero. Okay, then firm two can, can charge, okay, the price which is just a difference between V2 and V1. Okay, so that would be the market equilibrium. So that would be without time. 
So firm one's profit will be okay in market A, monopoly profit, but market B it will not get any 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 profit. So the profit will be equal to zero. In market B, the more efficient the firm will get profit of delta, okay, which is the difference in, in, in quality. So now what happens if there is a tie? If there is a tie, then consumers have two choices, okay, either buy bundle, buy the bundle, or just buy uh, uh, product B, B2 only. Okay, here actually what I'm assuming is actually this is a, I'm going to consider the independent product, okay? So you do not need the two products uh, together. So then let's say, it, when I put tilde, okay, this is the price associated with, with time. So big P is a bundle price. P2 tilde A is the firm two's uh, rival from the product price, okay, for product B, okay. And then for firm one, okay, to be able to sell, okay, so this is the condition, okay. So basically when consumers buy the bundle, so it will get utility of U from market A and the V1 from market B minus uh, bundle price should be bigger than the utility uh, consumers uh, can get okay, by product B2 only, okay? And you can easily see that the bundle price should be uh, th th this number, okay? And this is actually uh, less, so this, this is the uh, profit under time, this is the profit without time, actually the firm will be actually, the monopoly firm will be actually making loss, okay? So this is basically the essentially uh, Chicago School argument. So to be able to your inferior product, okay, actually you have to give a concession, okay, concession in price. So actually in the end you end up losing money. So basically tying is not 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 profitable. Okay, now let's move on to uh, extend the model, okay, to allow two-sidedness. Okay, I'm going to have a very simple structure. Okay, basically uh, what I'm looking at is the. So let me just. Uh, by explaining, uh, by looking at this thing. So, so this part is exactly the same as before, okay? So the only difference is that if you are going to attract one customer from a uh, consumer side, actually you can generate the additional revenue, which I call beta, okay? So you can consider that as advertising revenue, okay? So beta is equal to zero, then we are back to the original setup. So beta is a positive, that means, okay? So the higher the beta is, uh, advertising revenue is more uh, important. Now, once again, okay, even though we have this additional element of two-sidedness, okay, as long as the price can be negative, okay, then the Chicago School argument will still apply. Okay? So to see that, now, suppose there is no non-negative price restriction. In other words, the price can be negative. Okay, so then what will be equilibrium? Well, in market B, okay, now firm one, okay, will be actually willing to go below uh, marginal cost, which is up to minus beta. Why? Because even though the firm is making loss up to the beta, it can generate uh, additional revenue. So at, actually, firm will be willing to pay uh, uh, willing to pay negative price for minus beta. Okay. And then what the firm two will, will charge? Okay, minus beta and the plus. Uh, this is the, the quality difference. Okay. So firm once. Okay. Profit will be as before you and the firm to the uh, payout. Okay, actually you give the minus beta. Okay, plus concession. But since you are going to uh, collect the beta from from the other side, actually you are going to just get a, a delta. Okay. Now what about time? Okay, with time. Okay, so because now after time, now firm two will be willing to charge up to minus beta. Okay, so that will be the lowest price firm two will be willing to go. Okay, and then to buy the bundle, okay, you have to charge this price. And once again, okay, if you just compare the, the profit under time and the profit uh, without time, actually, once again, time is not uh, profitable. Okay. Now, what about if there is a non-negative price restriction, meaning that price cannot be a negative? Okay. So then the lowest price you can go is actually zero. Okay. So in that case, now how 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 the, the analysis will change? Now this term will be gone, okay, because it cannot be charged minus beta, so price should be equal to zero, okay, and the firm to the price will be also, so in other words, all the, uh, the numbers, okay, in, in, in the square, that will uh, disappear, okay, and then, okay, you can easily see that actually time now can be actually profitable, okay, so that's the, 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 the next slide of the chart, okay, so here now, in the end, okay, if there's a, a zero low bound, okay, and actually you are going to end up actually Profit under time will be actually higher than profit without uh, time. Okay. 
So, I mean, we are going to have a very different uh, conclusion, okay, whether time is profitable or not, okay, whether we have the price can be negative or not negative. Okay, so, it, 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 this could make a, a big uh, difference. Okay, so here I mean just the, the summary is actually so the two sides of the market, okay, plus a non negative price constraint can actually generate a new leverage theory of uh, time. Okay, that's the point I'm going to, to make. Okay, and also I can uh, uh, do a similar analysis for perfect complements, okay. So in this case, okay, so I mean, once again, I, as I explained earlier, okay, so the, in the perfect complement case, why time will not be profitable in the Chicago School tradition of uh, criticism? There's something called the price squeeze mechanism. Okay? Once again, uh, if the price is already equal to zero, there's a no more you can push down, okay, right from uh, price. Okay? So the logic will not, will not work out. So I'm not going to into the detail, okay? but so once again, price is, cannot, cannot, is just uh, hit the boundary already, okay? and it cannot be further adjusted. Okay, then you can actually resurrect okay, a new new theory of that time. Okay. Also, uh, another one is that actually, so here I uh, explained the model in terms of two sidedness of the market. Okay, but actually we can reinterpret this model okay, in different contexts. Okay, so the market does not have to be two sides. Okay, it could be the same market, but one market could be market today, and the other market could be the other side could be interpreted as the market tomorrow. Okay, so if we consider this kind of dynamic model, so the examples are actually a switching cost model and the direct network effect model. Okay, so what are these models? Basically, switching cost model means that actually if you sell today, okay, so then in the future, customer to buy from rival firm, they have to incur additional switching cost. So actually, you can actually earn higher profit. Okay, so that is switching cost model. In other words, if you sell today, you are going to have an advantage in the future and you are going to get additional revenue. That additional revenue can be interpreted as a beta in, 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 in my previous model. Okay. In other words, switching cost S can be reinterpreted as a beta in two-sided market. Also, in network effect model, once again, if you sell today, you are going to build uh, installed base, the installed base, and this installed base will have actually confer advantage in the future against your rival firm. So actually, even though you are equally efficient, okay, actually you are going to get some additional revenue. Okay, so we can do exactly the same kind of analysis, okay, for a switching cost model and also a network effect model. Okay, so in in those set, okay, we can also have a leverage theory of time. Okay, so now uh, let me. Uh, yeah, so then I mean, we have some, some uh, other extensions. Okay? I mean, we allow multi-homing, and uh, I mean, here in the simple set, we just assume the homogeneous consumers, but we can also introduce heter heterogeneous consumers. Also, in, my, in, in, in the previous simple model, it was a very, I mean, simple uh, ad financed model, okay? but we can also allow uh, intra-group uh, network uh, effects. Okay? So, I mean, everything, I mean, we, we, can, we, can, we can do the same type of analysis. So now let me talk about the price regulation, okay, as a, as a uh, uh, competition policy, okay. So here, I mean, we, uh, once again, I mean, this, the model is actually, uh, the platform can collect the data, and the, this uh, collected data can, uh, can be monetized, okay. So this is the kind of like a setup I consider. So let's look at the monopolistic platform. And let's say this is the amount of data collection uh, from each consumer, okay. So this is how much you collect the uh, 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 private information. And this uh, collected data can be, uh, can, can be uh, monetized at the rate of a beta, okay? So then, uh, so, but this uh, data collection actually imposes okay, some kind of a privacy cost, okay? So for cons consumer perspective, okay, the more information is collected, okay, the consumer will get some, some uh, privacy cost, okay? So that is, uh, we, uh, I denote as, uh, and then let's assume that there are a mass one of consumers and whose valuation can, can, be, can, be, can, be, can differ, okay, according to some distribution function. Okay, so in this case, okay, so then suppose okay, the price can be, once again, price can be, let's say, negative, okay, there's no restriction, okay, so then how the firms will, will, will behave, okay, so platform the property can be, okay, so, platform, so basically platform will decide how much uh, data collected from each consumer, okay, and uh, whom they are going to serve. Okay, so let's say V is the critical consumer type. Okay, so meaning that actually the all consumers whose valuations are V or higher will, will, will 
by the purchase, uh, uh, by the service. Okay, so then, so this is the B minus percentage. So this is the consumer devaluation for the product. This is the private cost. This is basically the price of the service. Okay, and then so this is the number of consumers. Okay, so there are two sources of revenue. One is a selling service, and there is also for this uh, each consumer you are going to collect the, uh, the amount of uh, data, and you can monetize by by beta. Because there are, there are two sources of revenue, and then you can do the, the first order analysis, okay? And then you can easily derive, okay? Then also we can also do socially optimal outcome. And when you compare, okay? So when you compare the personal condition for the for the, especially my focus is on, on data policy, data collection policy. So this is the consumers, okay? I mean the platform's optimal decision, okay? So this is basically marginal cost equal to marginal marginal benefit, okay? So. At what point you are going to stop collecting data? Okay, so for each additional unit of data, okay, you are going to you are collect, you are going to get better uh, uh, benefit. But since consumer uh, privacy cost will increase it at this rate, okay, so this will be reflected in the price consumers are willing to pay. Okay, so basically the price will okay will do all the all the, all the, I mean uh, necessary job. Okay balancing the benefit and the cost. So private uh, decision will be actually exactly the same as the socially uh, optimal decision. Okay, so in other words, in this very simple setup, there is no reason for the government to intervene okay, in platform the privacy policy because the platform will all internalize the consumer cost. Okay. However, once, uh, okay, so this is the dilemma. Okay, so basically in the absence of non-negative price concerns, there is no role for privacy policy, meaning that there's no need for government uh, regulation. Okay, but once again, okay, there's a non-negative price constraint, okay, so now then price cannot, okay, price, uh, so, so when there's a data collection, okay, so the, the price cannot adjust, okay, then actually, uh, we can actually show the following. So if the, there is a beta star, beta star is how much you, advertising revenue you can collect. So if beta is a very high, meaning that advertising revenue is very, very important, okay, then actually optimal pricing will be equal to zero. Okay, so you'd like to, to serve as many consumers okay? because uh, the more consumer you 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 uh, attract, okay, the, the higher I mean uh, the revenue you can generate. So actually, it turns out that the like, price will be equal to zero. Okay, beta is very very high. Okay, so then actually we can show that uh, all the all all the uh, analysis. Okay, then we can actually show. Okay. Yeah, so this is the kind of proposition, okay? So if the non-negative price constraint is binding, in other words, the price is already zero because the advertising revenue is too important, okay, then actually there could be some second best privacy policy, okay? Actually, it would be optimal for the, for the government to intervene in, in, in the privacy policy, okay? And once again, okay, so in, in R&D also, we do R&D analysis, okay? So once again, okay, the same message, okay? So basically, uh, to conclude, okay, so... Yeah, concluding, yeah, so, yeah. So many platform markets actually, okay, you exhibit the zero pricing, okay? And I gave just three examples where uh, this kind of concern can, can be important. So basically the takeaway message is that we uh, call for more systematic analysis. In other words, the antitrust uh, policy implication can be very different whether the market is, like, the price is zero or non-positive. I mean, okay, so that's kind of message. Thank you. Yeah.